Animal as usual, okay? Just give me a minute, huh? Okay, let me just uh, go back. Uh, I realized that I didn't do my recording. <laughs> so let's just go back again. All right, today is 24th of June, 2021. My pick is this, right? I believe that the NASDAQ is going to have a pick soon, not the pick, all right? So just take note of that. Huh? And I explain to you with more details why I'm going to say that. Sorry, I need to rewind my tape a little bit because I am really recording right now. All right, disclaimer as usual, please understand this. Whatever I share, please use it as a learning aid. And of course, if you make money for the market, I, I congrat you, but you have unfortunately, you lost money because of I share example. Then of course, right, I mean, this is part and parcel of the whole thing here, right? Disclaimer and do understand this. End of the day, you have to ascertain your own con uh, wealth, I mean, this uh, financial condition before embarking into this journey, okay? Okay, right, so you already have above disclaimer, you've accepted it and you have indemnified me, okay? All right, again, thank you, good morning to you, Cheng Kui. All right, now the new UFO to the moon, right? Now, this is a very good cartoon and it really con con basically um, they speak the whole idea right now of the market. All right, this guy is saying UFO, okay, UFO. And this guy is saying, no, it's NASDAQ, okay, because why? UFO, we know, right, it's always up in the air, in the sky, and it's always flying upwards. So that's why he's trying to say that, right, this is the new UFO, and this is the new uh, market that's going all the way to the moon, all right? And that is the NASDAQ, obviously, all right? So that is what this cartoon is trying to say. Now, apparently, do you know that, right, I think in a couple of days, uh, one or two more days, the um, the White House have to announce, okay, I think it's 26th of June, if I'm not wrong, they have to announce whether is there UFO in the world? <laughs> you know that? <laughs> well, I can tell you this, end of the day, it'll be a laugh. No. They'll tell you that there's some objects probably flying around in the air, but they cannot confirm that it's like, you know, an alien and stuff like that. You know, it's always like that. Now to me, is that I, I always think this way. Like, I mean, what, what makes us think that we are the, the right people to be, a right creature to be on Earth? Who knows, actually the UFO could be the right one. We are the one that come in. <laughs> anyway, I'm a UFO fan. I just said, I mean, you are just alien fans. I love it. I watch Men in Black 1, 2, 3. I enjoy the whole show itself. So I tell you myself, is this end of day? You know, anybody can be alien. Doesn't matter what, even the A is. All right. All right. Now, let me go straight now to the NASDAQ and my concern right now about the NASDAQ. Okay, let me explain to you with details. Okay, let's go. Right. Now, first of all, one minute. Huh? Okay, first of all, you can see that the NASDAQ, all right, the NASDAQ was trading about probably the 10,000 mark, okay, the 10,000 mark back in just August last year, okay, just August last year, it was trading at the 10,000 mark, okay, so in another one more month, we will be, another two more months in a way, right, we will be, you know, one year already, year to year, now today, the NASDAQ is at 14,000, okay, at 14,000, okay, so which means that you're telling me the NASDAQ, right, in the same a year where pandemic is ongoing and still ongoing, the market went up by 40%. Wow, incredible, right? 40%. But of course, we all know that, right, if you take the balance sheet of the Federal Reserve and put it side by side, right, you will see that it's actually the same damn thing, okay? So basically, in short, right, it is the money that motivated the all these stocks in NASDAQ to be higher at where it is today. It's the NASDAQ. Is the Federal Reserve that is actually intertwining each other. So of course, it's a simple thing. If let's say the tape, the the, uh, the money that is pumping the system itself is equivalent to how NASDAQ is moving, then naturally, when the system stop putting money in or the word taper stump comes in, the NASDAQ will have to fall. It's as simple as that because this is like the life of the, the water of life. So I'm pretty sure that the moment tapering comes in, Hi, Gary. All right. Hi, Chen Kui. All right. There will be a pullback of a sort like this. Okay. That's the reason why I draw this trend line for you. Okay. So this is a very conventional way of drawing trend line. This is the first reason. Okay. Fundamental. Now, technical analysis. All right. Now, undeniable, we can see that whenever you see a doji formation on the NASDAQ, can you see that? The doji formation, we kind of expect that the NASDAQ will usually take a bit of selling mode, okay? Can you see that? Can you see the doji? All right, all the dojis. All right, of course, the doji must be accompanied by the upside. Huh? All right, so that is whereby another reason why I suspect that the, the NASDAQ 
may see a peak, not the peak. A peak is the temporarily high right now, it may pull back for a correctional move, then after you go back to the new high again. A peak. I didn't say the peak, all right? I'm not that, not that smart enough to know that it's just really the highest level for now, okay? So that is another reason. So the second one is a doji. Now the third reason, I clear up my chart first, huh? okay? The third reason is that, okay, the degree of upside. Now look at the degree of the upside, okay? Take a look. This is the degree of upside before it came off, right? This is the degree of the upside before it came off, right? Okay? This is the degree of the upside we come off, right? Okay, so now this is the degree, all right? So can you see that? So basically, right, it's almost, we can say that it's about almost when the degree is about 35 degrees to 45 degrees angle, usually the market will pull back. So with the combination of a tapering potential plus a doji and a degree, I kind of tell you that the technical analysis is telling me that, right, I must be very careful as I approach this NASDAQ, okay? All right, last but not least, the one that really uh, could be a bit difficult to, um, uh, to accept, but it's a very powerful technical analysis where not many people actually follows is the RSI. Now, of course, RSI, we all know that the when the RSI is a 70, it's like overboard, below 30, it's oversold. But actually, this part is not really correct. It will depend on the trend. If the trend is bullish, all right, RSI at 70 is not an indication of oversold, uh, overbought, sorry. It's an indication of strength. And vice versa, and it's when the market is downtrend, RSI at the bottom doesn't mean you can buy. Okay, it had to work in a very different way. Now you look at number one, uh, a, a, okay, make it easier, A. This is B, this is C, and this is D, all right? Now, if you look carefully on this chart right now, A, B, C, D, all right? Now, A is the previous pick here, all right? You realize that B area, right? The price goes higher, but the RSI, doesn't really cross the 70 mark anymore. C, it got even higher, right? A new, a higher high, but the RSI now can't even go to the 70 area. At D, where the market is even higher compared to the C marker, but you realize that RSI can't even go even to the C RSI high level. So what is over here? Two things actually. That means that we are having a divergence right now. That means that the RSI is declining while the market is escalating. Now, usually when you see such a thing, this is a phenomenon we call it as divergence. Now, divergence will come with two, two potential. One, okay, potential one, the NASDAQ will be jumping up even higher later on. Because why? This is whereby the later on the RSI may find strength and go even higher, and this will become a all time high and may just shoot to the moon, okay? It is possible, okay? This is one way, look at it, the positive way. Now the negative way where we have seen many occasions before, when there's a divergence in this manner, then the market will pull back of a certain magnitude. So my point is this, that means that the NASDAQ can go either one more level to the moon or we are probably near a peak. So that's the reason why I say that traders who have NASDAQ position, if you're going to go long the next few days, go small and let the market run. But if the NASDAQ do pull back down, then we do see a significant downside. Now, of course, you may say, how, much, how, how, much, how many points? Well, from the outlook of this itself, right, it is a possible to see an 800 point to a 1000 point movement, downwards movement, okay, around there. 800 points from where we are now, uh, we are now at 14,274, right? So an 800 point drop will give you about 14,400, give you a 13,800 points uh, around there. Okay, uh, sorry, oh, sorry, my bad. Um, that will be 400 points, yeah. Well, there'll be something like this, okay? Somewhere around here, okay? Somewhere around here. Okay, this area here. So I kind of suspect that, uh, but of course the technical analysis said about, it's about 13,600, but I give you 13,400 around there. Okay, so this is what I'm seeing on the NASDAQ. And of course, if the NASDAQ do pull back down, it could be quite uh, pretty uh, profitable. And of course, what will likely happen, there will be a repercussion of this, because whenever you see the NASDAQ coming off, right, what usually will follow through is that uh, we're gonna see the Hang Seng market also coming off at the same time. 
All right, this is something that they note off. Okay, so that's why the Nasdaq will play a very important role right now to you know to give us a cue of what will have happen to the market, a few markets. Okay, so watch out for this. All right, if everybody is clear with this, please key the word clear right now. All right, if you like this chart, right, you can just hit the like button on the on the uh, Facebook right. Okay, thank you very much. All right, if you like what you are seeing right now, just hammer in on your hand for the like button, make the, all the big monicons fly up. I think that'll be my best validation. Okay, because my, I'm recording right now. So basically whatever you key and whatever you write will be definitely, uh, will help you out in the marketing side. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, wow, flooding in already. Okay, so I give you a very clear technical analysis on how I see the NASDAQ moving forward, okay? All right, thank you. All right, now to be a successful TWB member or trader, we always want you to upgrade yourself. So every day I commit to give you guys some of the top traders or investors their quote of the day. All right, like this guy saw Steve Clark, all right? Now do more of what works and less of what doesn't. I think there's a very powerful quote that I think for us, it makes loads of sense, all right? Many a time when traders come to me, right, I realize that when I tell them, do you buy above OP, above above OP, above pivot one, right? They tell me no. Below OP, below pivot two, do you sell? No. Why? Because they tell me this, tell me that. But actually, you know that this really works. And it's not only one time, two times, three times, it's so many times. So do what works and less of what doesn't, okay? A great quote to remind yourself to keep track of what is working in your trading strategy and what isn't. If something isn't working for you, cut it. Remember to keep a trading journal. I think it's a very powerful thing that I always tell the PTP student to do is to keep a trading journal. It can be just take a notepad on a handphone, notepad, huh? and just write something to tell yourself, today I done this wrong, what should I do? You don't need to be like extensively draw. Now, one thing I learned, I did last time, right? Is that I will go to, I will, I will bring out a chart and I will draw my forecast before the day start. And by the end of the day, I will revisit it and see what actually really happened and remind myself what I can do, I can do, I can do better. And I found it in a very nice clear file folder. And I have a lot of this file. But of course, unfortunately, um, during my time when we were moving house, right, my mom threw them away. You know, I can really show you uh, all my OO archive um, journal that I keep track. And that's the reason why I can do patterns quite fast because I realized that by doing this, it will like become a muscle memory for me. So consider doing this. I mean, get a printer, a reasonable printer, like two, three hundred dollars, okay, and then you print and you write. I mean, you can write in just pen and pen, pen, pen. If you want to be a little creative, you can do color pen and stuff like that. You try doing this for one week. I tell you, you will love your masterpiece, all right? Don't you worry about handwriting and you know what you write there. Don't worry, it's only for you to read. All right, unless you're the one day going to put it in as a museum. <laughs> okay, all right. So consider doing this, okay? Do what more, what works are really. All right, so of course we talk about what are the reasons why the market is going to go up, right? So I'm going to share with you the reason why the market is going to go up. Thank you guys for answering the word clear for me and also leaving me all the nice emoticons. All right, now we have the ugly PMIs. We have the service uh, recovery. We have all the soft data that is still mounting up while the hard data is coming off. Now, what is the difference between hard and soft data? Right? I, I said this before, soft data is those difficult, impossible to measure or quantify, all right, versus the hard data. So what we're seeing right now that the soft data is actually also coming down recently, but you know, it's still above the hard data. But the hard data is definitely coming down. So what I'm trying to say is this, right? The economy itself, right? Although the hope is still fairly there, but undeniable that traders are getting a little bit worried. So on one side, right, the data tell us that, right, hey, everything still looks good, right? Because the soft data seem to be still way, way above the hard data. But, all right, you just have to be very careful. Now, so today, my reason to buy is I right, got a little bit of both side view because I just want to tell you that, right, the thing is still positive. People are still very happy with this. The only thing is that, right, we, the, the thing is that shouldn't happen is that if one day people really lose their confidence in the market or complacency and become, uh, become yeah, turned around and become a fear factor, then things can get very ugly because it's very clear now the hard data is really coming down since last September, okay? All right, now, of course, one thing is that your federal Kaplan have came in, all right? He have came in and he is also calling for the Federal Reserve to consider doing tapering, okay? All right, so this guy, 
is called Robert Stephen Kaplan. All right, he's a professor. He's a president and CEO of the Federal Reserve of Dallas. All right, so in short, right, he is kind of right standing the position of also asking for a tapering. So let us look what he have said yesterday. All right, now yesterday he says this: as we make substantial further progress, which I think will happen sooner or sooner than people expect, rather sooner rather than later, we are weathering the pandemic. I think we will be far better off from a risk management point of view, beginning to adjust this purchase of treasuries and mortgage-backed securities. So what I'm trying to say is this, it's saying that, right, okay, at the moment now, right, we are doing a lot of purchases of treasuries and the mortgage-backed securities, but I think further sooner than later, we should be actually looking to do something with it, all right? If we do purchases longer than might be necessary, for me, it actually may reduce the flexibility in adjusting rate later, which is definitely true because the longer they continue purchasing all this, um, this uh, MBS and all these treasuries, right? It's going to be very difficult for very to, to to even in, to increase interest rate because you need a process to reach interest rate level I mean, increase it. You need tapering and stuff. So they keep on buying. You're not tapering. Then I will question you. Then when going to do the interest rate hike? Because the problem is that if you don't have interest rate in time, the market may go into a stagflation. That means that right inflation is there but the productivity isn't there and then we have a big big problem okay so he's saying that right i rather start tapering assuming we meet our conditions sooner rather than later so that we have more flexibility in deciding what to do with risk down the, the road right? and this is very clear now we talked about interest rate hike first let's talk about just tapering i think that's very important i think that makes a lot of sense Okay, I actually think that right, the Federal Reserve may not even increase interest rate later, not that, that I can see. Because if they do that right, they will go back to you go back again to the problem and then whole thing will just collapse. I rather think that they just, just taper first, let the market cool down a little bit, and then after that, right, when the, the market price is so high now, right, like cool down all the way, let value come back in again, and of course, let the wealth be transferred back to the normal or you know. To normal level so that right everybody have a chance to go into it that's how i see it like. if i'm very reserved right i will do tapering but i may not do interest rate high this is how i see it okay so that is of course me i'm nobody here i'm just informing you what what this guy uh professor kaplan have said all right all right but of course the market didn't really bother by it well you can see that the Nasdaq is still going up. It's not going to be to be bothered. We have the um, this is I think believe this is Russell. I think Russell and the Dow Jones a bit flat down, but that is reason why I say the Nasdaq is to the moon because you can see it doesn't really care. So of course, why is that so? Why care? Why is the Nasdaq going up when it's not supposed to be going up? I already told you guys because so many people think that the Nasdaq was to come down right back then two three years ago while the trend was still going up, and I reminded you that the NASDAQ trend will go even higher until a certain point. So a lot of short sellers are shorting the NASDAQ. And that is the reason why the NASDAQ keep on climbing. Now it comes to a point whereby when people say, okay, you know what, let's not stop, let's not do NASDAQ shorting anymore. Let's go and buy NASDAQ now. And that is the key turning point. And this is one I've been observing and I've been waiting. Okay. So that is the reason why today I'm covering this because now I realize that people are getting a bit pissed off with the NASDAQ and they are going to go into long position. And I tell you this, and a 40% increment from last year, August to today now, 40%, I can tell you this, no matter how, it's kind of overboard. You understand my point? <laughs> yeah, indeed. So guys, be very, very careful on the NASDAQ, all right? Now, I told you guys that in one way or another, they were to bring down the VIX indicator. And indeed, yesterday, the VIX index jumped down all the way to below 14 yesterday. Wow. Okay. So when I saw 14 yesterday, uh, I didn't do much because I was like away. But when I saw 15, I went to buy some again at 15 and about some at about 16 level around here. Okay. Now, to me, is that this is a very good hedge against the portfolio because this VIX indicator or this VIX index now at 14 and 16 is ridiculous level. All right. If you look back here, History, the lowest it goes about nine. Okay, that was a really, really, really low, 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 low time, long, long time ago. So the last low recently is about this area. So kind of thinking that the market at the high and the VIX at the low, obviously for any logical sake, the current now the dot plot going this way, it will be a good time to buy. All right. All right, I think this is a lovely time to buy into VIX, right? So today now we have about 15 or 16 level. Uh, today we are 16. I think that this is going to go up again, easily another 21, okay? So this is where I'm seeing right now. 
I'm strongly advocating that you can buy some VIX and hold it to hold until 21, all right? If you make money from this, congratulations to you. But I'm telling you this, this is a very outright simple trade. Downside risk is small, upside potential is very big, okay? All right, clear on this, this is VIX. Now, how can you buy VIX? You can go to Think of Swim, you can go to some platforms, all right, make sure it's the legitimate one and look out for it, okay? All right, it's a pretty, pretty outright simple market. Uh, that just basically, you are just betting that there will be things might happen or market may just go into a fear factor, you know, in the time to come, okay? Got the idea? Okay. All right, so the thing is this, don't forget, once again, we're gonna have our, this special Zoom. Now, yesterday, uh, I received a lot of messages asking me, Kel, can you give more insights of what you can share with Arun and stuff like that? I say, guys, I just have a good phone call with Arun recently, and I just gonna, he's gonna he going prepare. Okay, I tell you this, Arun is gonna prepare what he wants to share with you guys. So honestly, I am not ready to tell you what we were talking about because he tells me he'll prepare and I will just have a rehearsal with him probably three to four days beforehand. And then we see what angle can we go. So seriously, I, I don't know exactly what is to be here. Because again, Arun has so much thing to can and share. I'm pretty sure he already quoted right, he'll give the best show. All right. Um, what's the stop loss for VIX? Uh? Honestly, I can tell you that if you really want to put a stop loss, you can try to put at 13 or 12. But the thing is that you can see here, yeah, it's very easy to get spiked down like, because like I say at this level now, it's a really the very, very low level, right? It's very easily to be spiked. Huh? So I cannot, if I tell you 12, right? Who knows, it may hit 12 and exactly and rebounded. So maybe I will just see if here that you can give, even if you have a stop loss, maybe about 12 if you really want to do that, okay? But uh, I say this is going to be like a, a buy at a hedge, okay? That means you buy a hedge with your long position on hand right now on the other markets and you do a fixed buy. So that's a hedge position. You understand my point? Yeah, if you have a stop loss on a hedge, then you start hedging in a way. But of course, to protect your capital, it makes sense. Lah. But again, buy we should be comfortable with, okay? No problem, huh? Okay. So back to Arun, right? So Arun will be will be definitely um, coming on board on which day again? Remember, the day will be on day this third of July, okay? Third of July at eleven a.m. Okay. So remember this: the condition to attend this is that you have to register. So of course, we come to the link very soon, and you have to invite a friend. I mean, I'll be honest with you: the only reason why Arun is doing this because he want to help me in this. TWB family would grow it bigger. And of course, only when family refer family friends or family members, they get, they give a trust. So in short itself, right, if there's no trust involved in any of aspect of TWB family, then of course, there's no risk, not necessary to even be coming in to listen to Arun. Because Arun will be definitely covering a lot on the TWB system and how he utilizes it to make money. And everybody wants to know how he make money. And he's telling you already, follow. And what that's how I told you about the quote of the day, right? Is that to do what works, all right, so if you're gonna remind you on this and you still are not convinced, then seriously, you may just give this entire event a miss, all right? Now, three condition, number one, you need to bring a friend in, a family friend in, okay? Number two condition is that you have to have a webcam, view cam on throughout the whole entire um, sharing session, okay? You have to have it on. So if you are gonna be like traveling, on that day, all right, theoretically, unless you're driving, only when you're driving, we theoretically, we have to give and we will let you do it uh, to be safe, all right? But if not, try to arrange. We're giving you ample notice today, 3rd of July, two Saturday from now. So please do arrangement, all right? This whole entire event is about 90 minutes long, all right? Of course, there's a break in between, but I think that you can spend 90 minutes in a movie theater, right? So just give us 90 minutes of time. And I tell you this, it's not going to be like forever. You're going to like, oh, I keep on doing this. It's very difficult to find time for Arun and Arun really make time for all of us. So thank you once again, Arun. And of course, those who are going to participate, Please, okay, do know the condition. And the third one, of course, get pen and paper ready to write down materials and stuff. Now, will this event be replayed? Of course it will. We will be recording this. But because for recording and all the, you know, making the things nice a little bit, it may take about two weeks time. So that is the reason why. Now, will this be actually on the trip with the boys revision video, right? It will be, okay, it will be. That means that it's also sending out through Facebook. But of course, like I say once again, if only we will only entertain people on a Zoom site because we want you to ask questions immediately so that you can you get you get all your Q&A's answered. I think that's very important for this whole entire thing. The Facebook site replay may be delayed, maybe like one day or two days. So that's why again, don't 
how, wait for the Facebook replay, just go for the Zoom session, okay? Are we clear with this? Zoom session. All right, thank you once again, Arun. Wow, he's around here. Thank you, thank you very much, Arun. Appreciate that, really. You know, when I say this to a friend of mine, right, I said, shock. Are you sure he's doing that? Wow, why would he want to do this for you, Cal? This is that. And I told him that probably because he really appreciates what we're doing. All right, now the thing is this, this is actually a lead up to our next preview, okay? Our next preview. <laughs> Arun, I was watching the wrong video. I was watching Amazing Sesame. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, because we're on the 10th of July, we're going to have a preview. Now, let me tell you something very important. Okay. Now, over the last three months, you have really observed that, right? I did not really cover the uh, TWB system in person because I was very busy doing the app preparation, right? Indeed, the last three months itself, right? We have to really redo a lot of things. And of course, I need to train the TTT and stuff. So that's why we basically uh, do the learning on ePortal. So now things have got a bit better, more settled down. Our team members get stronger. We have a bigger team right now. So I can go back in a way. And of course, like I say, I also want to get connected with you guys. So that means that right, every, every month, one Saturday, I will do a revision or class for the uh, TWB system, okay? That means that right now, when you pay 1688, okay? Right, there'll be one Saturday that you can come online through Zoom and listen to me and I explain to you from TWB system right from the very beginning until the end for nine hours, okay? Nine hours, okay? Plus a break in between, of course. All right, so it's just a, basically an online class, okay? Every month, month, one Saturday, I'll be doing that. Okay, so people who have uh, went through this uh, e-portal, right, you can come back in and listen one more time. So you can listen live. For those new members, you get to see me in person through Zoom. Okay, so there's something that you add on recently, all right, because I'm back. <laughs> okay, I'm back. All right, but of course, we are going to increase the price to 2 triple eight by 1st of August because we're going to give a more stuff going to you guys, to people who come on board. Okay, so there'll be price differential, of course, there'll be value added in. So all this thing is given. So if you guys hear Arun on the 3rd of July, I'm pretty sure you want your friends to sign up for this, okay? And of course, all the GAP members, we total now receive nine GAP members already. Fantastic. So GAP members on the 3rd of July and the 10th of July, these two days are the days that you really must, must tell people to listen. All right, so that right, it will help you to create more sales for yourself. I mean, end of the day is that you want more sales, right? So this is where you leverage on me and Arun and, and the preview to you know bring more friends to join us. Okay, end of the day, it's all about making this family even bigger. All right, thank you once again. All right. Okay, and of course, yesterday we have very good talks with the counterparties who are students from different parts of the world, and they are very keen to progress further with us. So guys, if you have any connection, whether it's in any country, you know, it doesn't matter. If you think that you can connect us with any event organizer or yourself or a group of friends or some society or clubs, just contact Richard Heng, our one or two new team member at 9274-9213. Contact him and tell him that what plan you have. Who knows, just by little referral like this, uh, you can be very rich later, okay? All right, thank you very much. Now, in the second half of the MAO, I'll talk about the US dollar index, the implied correlationship, and Michael Burry deletes his Twitter again. <laughs> Never stop doing this. And of course, I will cover a little bit on our KFC. So today on a Dow, today is a new KFC level, right? So we'll talk about the Dow uh, very shortly, all right, during that part, okay? Okay. All right, once again, yesterday, Susan went live and all went well, all is happy and she makes uh, some trading. This is yesterday one, I haven't updated, sorry, but I know yesterday she traded and yesterday was a very choppy market, very choppy, all right? And uh, I think she lost about $50 to $100 yesterday. It's not better, I mean, I don't mind telling you live because it's what the fact it is. You can't be winning every day, but overall you make that is very important, right? So basically yesterday was a very choppy day and I know that, right, usually, when a market is very choppy, the next few days, the market could likely be very directional. You always know that, right? So that is the reason why we should be looking out to trade today and tomorrow because there should be good money coming in if you just follow the system, okay? 
All right, take note of that. Huh? So, Susan, for night event, will, night session, sorry, we'll do on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, okay? So today, Thursday, she will not be doing any night session. So today, she take a break. But the daily in the morning, uh, in the afternoon, sorry, daily one, right, in the afternoon session is there, 3 p.m. to 5 p.m., okay? All right. So now let's look at some global news first. First of all, we have in, we have double digits still for our COVID community cases. But what is very scary is the number of new cluster forming. That is the reason why we really must be very careful and put on your mask, okay? You really have to do that whenever you travel. And of course, now the, the del new Delta variant, right? I'm not too sure, but it seems to be spreading in all the unvaccinated area in America and it's spreading to about 92 countries right now. But you realize that it's very, very little coverage on this anymore. So it seems that like, people are like, getting used to it or the media want us to get used to it. As long as you put on masks, vaccinated, um, you, are, you are vaccinated, right? So things should be okay. So that is what is happening. So Dr. Fauci says that right, the Delta accounts for 20% of the new cases and will be the dominant COVID variant in US in weeks. Okay, so Dr. Fauci is still saying that, but of course we have some different version we heard from Benedict recently, right? So end of the day is it's pretty clear that we're still having this problem. You're gonna stay with us for a while, right? But just protect yourself, we should be fine. Okay. All right, so FYI, the variant which first emerged in India has quickly swept across the globe. And in fact, now 92 countries, at least uh, 92 countries are now having this Delta. So I'm questioning, question, questioning is how come it's like that? I thought that we already have all the, uh, the protection and all the, the, the guarding at the airports and all the ports, right? So why is this happening? So apparently now this variant is the fastest and the fittest coronavirus strain yet. Wow, my goodness. And it will pick off the most vulnerable people. Okay, so that is the thing here, but it seems that they just insist that people take the vaccine. Lah. So that's why I, I just felt that way. Okay, all right. Now, another thing is that Tesla should uh, have a bit of problem right now because Chinese Tesla rival, uh, this uh, X Peng, right, okay, is coming on and they have raised up $2 billion in the Hong Kong listing. Okay, all right, this company, right, Xiao Peng, right, this Xiao Peng, right, I mean, the car honestly is not as nice as Tesla, I'll be honest with you. But because it's a Chinese Tesla, so obviously people rather support, right, their own beating. So that's the reason why uh, Tesla in this China now is not doing as well because there's a lot of people prefer to do this. And of course, there's some propaganda going on and it doesn't really allow people to use Tesla on the road. So in a way, so that's why this is what's happening right now. And because of that, right, if this continues to do well, I kind of suspect that, right, this Tesla, uh, what you call revenue in China will dip further in the months to come. All right, this is my personal take here. And quite interesting, you see that uh, when CNBC went to ask, contact them, right, you see Xiao Peng doesn't want to talk to them. <laughs> Something, right? Don't you find that it's very interesting? Normally, a financial uh, channel when come in, right, obviously both, I mean, the business will open their arms and talk to them, but apparently, right, they declined. So quite interesting, don't you find that? All right, now this is the real thing here. That's what happened in Hong Kong right now, and we can we can see very clearly that um, the this um, Hong Kong Apple Daily is going to close today. Yeah, today. Yes, today. All right. So this morning we have a lot of articles, videos, and a lot of stuff because let's is this can see that the number of people buying it is really really incredible. Okay, and of course this is all in Cantonese actually. Those are Chinese words but actually read in Cantonese, okay? So basically, in short, right, if I say that right, the Hong Konger, uh, uh, it means that under the rain, they say goodbye to this China Apple, I mean, it's uh, Apple Daily, sorry. And they they say that, right, we will continue to support in a way, la, right, in a different way. So the, 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 the number of people buying is really, really incredible. I saw the video, I'll show it to you if I can. All right, you can see that. So that, you know, it's very emotional right now because in Hong Kong, they have reliance on this. But that's FYI, eh? when I was in Hong Kong, I did pick a couple of times. And I tell you, it's a very good read. It's a very tabloid thingy. And of course, you know, this China, this Hong Kong, yeah, this journalist, I call it Go Zai Dui, right? Go Zai Dui, meaning they really, the journalists will, you know, park themselves in the van and chase after the movie stars and stuff like that, right? Uh, actually, this, this, uh, this, um, this company, right, is the one that started all this, okay? And that's the reason why people like it now. Initially, it was kind of clean fun and people enjoy it. But last two, three years, indeed, there's a very big shift in the way they report. And it was very clear that right, it was really going against the China 
All right, so that's why people start to stop reading it. But still, uh, for, the people, for the people in Hong Kong who demonstrated recently, right, they will take this as a, a very important guidance, uh, right? So that's why two different views, okay? So you can see that, right? Now, they are all, people, all the journalists, all the right, reporters are pretty sad, but they know that this day will come. All right, and they say that, right, it's a very sad day for Hong Kong because that means that in terms of this uh, freedom of speech itself, right, it's no longer available like, in a way. So this is what happily happened around in Hong Kong. You can take a read. All right. I have the video. Let me just see. I can play it for you. Just give me a moment. Let me see. I have the video for you guys. Hold on. Uh. Just give me a moment. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so we have uh, operations uh, with the assistance from the uh, police cartoon units and the crime range. Uh, to targeting a, um, a cases involved the Apple Davis is conspired with somebody else to request the foreign countries, institution, organization, and individuals to impose sanctions against Hong Kong SAR and the People's Republic of the China. In this connection, we arrest four men and one woman, and all of them are the directors of the company affiliates to the Apple Daily for the offenses to collusion with the foreign countries and their external elements uh, and dangerous national securities. We found that on the newspaper and on the uh, internet version, we found that so far it's uh, over uh, 30 pieces of the articles, which is request the foreign countries or institutions to impose the sanctions to the Hong Kong and the people of the republics of the China. Also in English and in Chinese as well. Okay, so you can see that that is the main reason, now, of course, you know, when you cast a as a reporting agency and you report things like that, I mean, it's just a matter of time you get into trouble. And unfortunately, they did it. All right, I remember that then, right, this paper came up about 26 years ago, roughly there, right, establishment about 26 years. And when Jimmy Lai, the, the, the boss, when he started doing and giving the papers, right, most common papers back then was like six Hong Kong dollar, but he purposely sell it at three Hong Kong dollar just at a cost level and give extra and give one Apple at the same time. And because of that, right, people well, like it. And of course it's tabloid, right? Entertaining. So people, you know, become the everyday thing. That's why it, they grow very well on that, right? So of course, when they got into the, all the assemblies and stuff and all the fighting, all the scolding on the policemen and stuff, well, things just go all the way downhill, all right? So that's what happened. If you want to look more on it, you can just Google it out, okay? All right, you can, uh, this is actually what's happening right now in Hong Kong, okay? All right, now what we have to today, we have the core durable goods order. Okay, yesterday we saw the new home sales was lower than expected. So again, I told you guys that the US economy is actually having a bit of a problem 
But the new home sales going down by nearly about 100,000 is really off the mark. And of course, the crude oil inventories, my God, is at minus 7 million now. It's really getting more and more, right? It means that the production of crude oil is no longer available. And because of that, that's the reason why the crude oil price is going up. So there's some form of manipulation here, I'm not too sure. But because when the demand is not there, the people who do the supply, they also scared to waste the cost, right? They also reduce. So because of that, and when there's a really necessity to have it, then the cost will just increase. So that's what's happening right now for the crude oil inventories. Now for today, we have the cost, uh, the, the core durable goods order. I suspect the number will be still high. And the GDP, I think they will just be between 6.2 to 6.4. And the initial jobless claim, I believe that it's about, about 400,000. So we see like, how it goes from there. So we will see how it goes and that will become an important point to let us know what will happen like, on Friday too. Now the Dow Jones basically was so flat, very flat to the last one, last half an hour. Oh my goodness. That's why yesterday you don't see me talking much because I know that the market will be very flat. Now <laughs> I know it because it's something quite typical. Like when a market basically have no more direction anymore, right? It'll be like this for a while. And of course, when up there, when Kaplan comes to come in and talk, right? Uh, that, that's where the price came off a little bit. But that's only a little bit. Yes, indeed, uh, Brian, there'll be no more, no more, no more paparazzis uh, because they know that if they do that, then obviously, you know, things will happen. <laughs> okay, so that's thing here. So I was, I was wondering how the Hong Kong stars were we doing. All right, so in short, yesterday we had the Dow Jones lost 21 points, but the Nasdaq still squeezed a positive gain to a record closing. Now, out of the 11 sector, right, eight of them lead by utilities drop, okay? So ExxonMobil, Occidental, Petroleum, Devon uh, Energy, you know, they are the one that went high, okay? Because why? That the crude oil price went up. So that's the reason why. Of course, some technology counter like Tesla and Netflix also went up, okay? But overall itself, right, people are still waiting for the jobless claim data, which is coming later tonight. And of course, the annual bank stress test are scheduled for release after the bell on Thursday. And most likely, I can say that they may not do that well. So that's the reason why some of the bank's counters are coming off the last two, three weeks, okay? So of course, Again, it became a surprise, we wouldn't know, but I, my personal take is this, like, I don't think the, they will do that well unless they have really keep a lot of money and standby. Okay, news is very quiet, really got no much news. It's all, it's very, very quiet. So I have nothing much to tell you in terms of US side. Let's look at the Dow Jones, shall we? Now the Dow Jones recap first. Well, the Dow Jones opening price yesterday was between the two pivot, right? And the KSI is red. So as again, a broken recorder, I'll tell you that if the market goes up, you go to KTR plus one, okay? Because the KSI is red. But if the market goes down, very high chance you go to KTR minus one. Otherwise, by saying this, some of you say, hey, this is that being like, not saying things. No, this, this is different here. I am saying that, right? Because the market, if it goes up, the possibility of going KTR plus one is there. Possibility. But if it goes below OP, right? It's a high chance that you go down to KTR minus one. Can you see the difference there in the choice of words that I use? Yes, because when the KSI is red, right? The, the, you know that the downside potential is higher. So what happened is again, very crazy. Do you notice that the low, the, the pivot to the number was 33,861, right? Look at the low of the day. Sorry. Look at the low of the day. The low of the day is 33,871. That means that we are about 10 points away to mark up the low. And I tell you this, our TWB system have the amazing fit to do this almost every day. Yes, almost every day we can, our levels are can able to predict the high or the low of the day. Don't you find it's ridiculously incredible? All right, it's as if that we have a prop, we have a direct access uh, to something else. So look at it, my friends, take a look, okay? So what happened? The Dow Jones open and it tries to travel upwards, right? But you see, it can't even go to KTR plus one. It can't even go. So that's why it's quite natural. It will go towards the KTR minus one. But apparently, the market can't even go near there. Or it couldn't go there. All right. And in fact, it was so slow until the last one hour. There was some selling that misses the low of the day by 10 points and recover. So it was a very, very tiring day yesterday. And I can tell you this. When the market behave like this, there's only one answer to that. That means a very bigger, is a, a bigger movement is on the way coming, right? It means that right when the market goes into such a slow movement, right, very good chance we're gonna see bigger movement coming on the way. So that's why traders, you need to be very careful on this for today and tomorrow. Okay, heard me loud and clear. 
Okay, good. All right, so let's look at the US market right now and we can cover all the indices. Okay, just give me a moment, let's go. Okay, so Dow Jones today, we have a recovery right now. And um, let me just bring it all the way down. Okay, you, get, you can see that this is the MLP for today. And MLP is about 33,936. Now, of course, we have the very big BNB high, uh, BNB level, and the market is still trying. But yesterday, the closing was slightly below the BNB RL. So by theory, it should be pulling back a bit. But this morning, it got pushed up again. So as long as it stay above the BNB RL, there is a possibility that the Dow Jones can go up the same magnitude. So which means that this is the BNB high and low, right? If the market will go up, right, most likely you'll do something like this. So there is a possibility for the Dow Jones to go all the way back to 34,800 level. It is possible, okay? It is really possible. But the only thing that's a downer right now at the market, the MA30 is still on top. So unless there's a revert, it's a fresh pull up, all right? If not, like, is it this upside going to be kind of difficult, okay? But as long as the Dow Jones stays above the MLP for today, we are kind of safe at the moment. So let's repeat the MLP for you. It's 33,935. I'll make it easier. 33,935. Okay, all this MLP that I draw every day is just give you a ballpark idea where to put the MLP. If you want to have a precise number, you need to do your own homework. Okay, all right. This is something very important. Okay, traders, kindly take note. Okay, all right. Now, this is the Dow Jones, and this is going to be the weekly chart. The weekly chart is still the same. Nothing much has changed. Still above the, the BMB of the weekly chart, so nothing much to be concerned for. Now, the NASDAQ, okay, the NASDAQ is the one that we need to watch out. Okay, now, yesterday, I already, just now earlier, I covered with you the NASDAQ, how I feel. Right, the NASDAQ, 95%. The 95% marker is over here, and that number is 13,615, okay? 13,615 is the 95% uh, marker. So if let's say, if anybody want to buy the NASDAQ, 13,615 13, will be the target level that I think you will go down. Uh. So now today is trading at about 14,313, right? So it's going to be down with somewhere around there, okay? So if the NASDAQ is to pull back down, I suspect that the, the downside will first hit the MA30 first. And then if the MA30 loses track, then it will likely be heading towards the 95% mark, okay? All right, so that is how I see the NASDAQ right now. And again, with the combination of the fundamental, the chart views and stuff like that, I believe that this 95% mark, uh, 13615 will likely be triggered in the near future, okay? And of course, let's look at the S&P 500 conventional. Now, S&P 500 yesterday have triggered the technical level that I mentioned yesterday. I said that, right, this number 4256 will be a very important level to watch. And indeed, yesterday, the S&P really triggered and came off. So today, it seems that you may want to try again. Now, as long as the market can't close above 4256, then there is still a possibility for the market to pull back down. But of course, if the S&P can stay above 4256, I am very certain to say, I'll tell you that it will basically go power the new all-time high again. Okay, so traders, 4256 is S&P level. Watch out for it. This is going to be pretty good for you guys, for those who want to take the uh, more adventurous step to do a hedge over here to short the market if you want to do that. Okay. All right, so let's just take a look right now on the general market for today using the TWB system. Once again, okay, the Dow Jones. Now, the Dow Jones today, this morning, all right, you can see that the Dow Jones today, this morning, Okay, the opening price is basically almost at the pivot two level, right? The opening price is 33,900. The pivot two is 33,897. So as long as, I mean, obviously this morning I've triggered the pivot two and recover. Now with the KSI rate, definitely same thing again, the upside potential is for KTR plus one. The downside potential will be very high is KTR minus one. So you see, I draw it a little bit bigger, right? So I'm going to say this, now the market is staying above OP. So naturally it will go for KTR plus one. But, but if the market ever goes back down below the OP mark and go below the pivot two, which is 33,897, very easily we should see KTR 
minus one. So traders, this could be an opportunity for you to trade as long as you follow the rules, okay, of engagement, all right? Now let's look at the intraday happening right now, a bit too early to call, but we can take a look. At the moment now, the Dow Jones this morning has stayed above the pivot too, right? You can see. And of course, if you look carefully, this guy is a BNB. So it's a BNB with a CCRY. That's why it's going up. Now, I haven't hit KTR plus one yet, but of course, at the intraday, TSCB is going up above it, okay? So the two KTR level, we can take a look right now. Okay, the two KTR level. For the Dow Jones, it's at 34,027. That is a KTR plus one level. So the Dow may be going towards here to trigger it. If the Dow do come down and goes below the opening price and people to then, of course, to go down to 33,772 will be very, very high. So my personal take is this. If the market do breaks here, chance of the market going down to this level is going to be a pretty high possibility. Okay, 33,772 level. Okay, got it? Yeah. Now that is the Dow Jones. Let's look at the NASDAQ, shall we? Now the NASDAQ today, you can see very clear that the NASDAQ is still between the people one and people two. All right, so with that, as long as the NASDAQ stays above OP to go out to KTR plus one, should be a problem because why the KSI is green. See the difference in tone. All right, but if it goes below people two, okay, then the most it may go down is KTR minus one. Yeah, I see the difference there now, the words I use. Because the KSI is green, I know that the downside will be kind of like limited. So if the market goes below the pivot two level, right, the downside potential is quite going to KTR minus one and the best minus two. Now, of course, this is also a zebra formation we picked up recently, right? So same thing again, if it goes higher, if the, if the market do go higher, it can go by, it can go above to 14,500. But of course, on the flip night, if it switch side, if it goes down, and if the market comes back down to this point here, which is that the zebra top part, okay, then the downside potential can be all the way like this, okay? So that's the reason why you look at it, right, in terms of translation to the chart, 13,600, right, seem to be the zebra one time one. And of course, if that really happened, that is in line with what I shared earlier on the NASDAQ chart. Don't you realize that some, somehow or rather, everything seemed to be, uh, you know, moving in that particular direction, okay? All right, so that is the NASDAQ. And of course, we have the S&P 500. Now, the S&P 500 today, the opening price is already below pivot two, but it's now basically above the pivot two, right? The KSI is green in color. There's a high chance that the, the S&P will hit KTR plus one rather easily. Now, only if it goes below OP of the day, then maybe we'll see KTR minus one. So you see the choice of words I use? The word is high possibility and maybe because it's all depending on the KSI itself. All right, if everybody is clear on what I just shared on the Dow, NASDAQ, S&P, please key the word, uh, uh, let's key S&P, S&P easier. Let's have something different here. If you have already heard and, and very clear what I share, please key the word S&P, right? S and P, you know, S and the symbol N and P, or I can short form, just key the word S P, also can. All right, just trying to make a bit different so that you guys are skipping with me, you know, together we're doing this, okay? All right, thank you very much. Just to, you know, remind, to just keep yourself nimble, watching the market and don't get, don't fall asleep, okay? All right. Okay, now let's continue and we look at the, um, other markets like Hong Kong right now. Now, Hong Kong this morning had went up already, but it seems like there's some profit taking at the moment. Okay, there's some profit taking, but it's still above the MA30. So unless the Hang Seng market goes below the MA30, then we may see some selling. But at the moment now, MA30 is very beautiful. Look at it. The Hang Seng touches MA30 and immediately it bounces up already. So if you caught it, you will make about 200 points very easily at the 28,760 level, okay? Now for the China A50, now yesterday, China A50, I thought it was going up, but interestingly, it reversed and closed down. Okay, now today, it has tried to recover. That's why you can see that the reason why Hong Kong is up is earlier, but if the Hong, if, if the Chinese market, if the, Hong, if the market uh, for China A50 breaks again the low of yesterday, I believe that this will bring more selling back down. I still believe that the China A50 should be coming down to 
16,920 in the near future. All right, I still believe in that. It's not because I'm very against this market, but there is also many reasons for this. Because the variant actually is happening and it's hitting China, some of the city, but obviously you don't really see any reports from there. And of course, the, the people there is going to be worried and the GDP, I don't think it's going to be any better. But of course, again, you can massage the numbers, but the chart tells me that very good chance we should be able to see 16,920, okay? Now, yesterday, DEX collapsed, all right? Uncle Arun, you remember yesterday I told you that DEX must stay above the MLP and I gave you a figure 15,600. I say very clearly that if the DEX can stay above 15,600, DEX will likely challenge again to about this point, 15,740, right? But if I, I also say that, right, if the market fail to stay above the MLP, there could be some selling. And of course, yesterday, I also mentioned the MA30 is at 15,600. Sorry, this is four, okay, wait a minute, this is four zero, 1640. The ML, the, the MA30 is 6,400. So 640 and 600, right? So when I said that, and while Dex really loses it, and of course the selling was all the way down to 15,455 yesterday. So now the question is this, today, what can we look out for, all right? So first of all, the MLP for today will be somewhere around here, and that's about 15,560 level. So this is the MLP, and this is the MA30. So both of them doesn't look so good, right? So my personal take for today is that the DEX may be coming down further, okay? Now, how much further? I believe that you may have to take out this white candle, and this particular level is about 15,300. So maybe if the DEX can come down to 15,300, it may just stop there. It may stop there. Most, it may go down to 15,218, which is the next available fresh chocolate bar. Now, if things get really, very serious, and if the market really pierce below 15,218, then very clear, is heading for the 95 region. So the 95 region is 15015. So that is the level you're looking at. Now, of course, this is a downside. If the market can recover above the MLP today, the top first resistant will be the MA30, which is the 15,600 level. Okay, All right. So that's how I see it for today for DAX. Okay, all the numbers have been given to you guys. You just have to follow through and make as much money as possible. Okay, All right, from DAX. Okay. Thank you. I will be trading DEX today. Yeah, definitely. I'll also be trading DEX today. Okay, now last one will be the Nikkei to end up for our this part here. Now Nikkei this morning have again tried to test the MA30. Now Nikkei MA30 have been tested for the third time already. You can see that the day before, yesterday, and today. Three times already it tested MA30. Right. This time, when the market touches the MA30 for so many times, right, that means that something big is going to happen again. So how big? Well, you can see this. If the market can cross above the MA30 after touching it three times, right? Then obviously it'll be going towards this point and that's 29,400 region, okay? So today now the, net, the Nikkei is trading at 28,880, right? So if it cross the MA30, which is 28,910, as long as the market can stay above 28,910, there's a good chance for the Nikkei to go to 29,400. That means of 500 points from here. But if the, the Nikkei fail to cross the MA30 and pull back, then the MA200 will be a very important level that the Nikkei has to hold. And that is about 28,560, okay? All right, so for people who like trade Nikkei, right, these are all the levels to watch out for. I kind of believe that the the 28,560 could be triggered in the near future, okay? All right, so that is the Nikkei for all of you. And of course, we can put the uh, TWB system on the Nikkei and you can see very clearly that today the Nikkei opens uh, below the pivot two. So likely it should be sell, right? The KSI is red, but because it couldn't go down, then it will easily go to KTR plus one. That means that if the market is supposed to be down, 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 down day, right? It should be going down, but the market still stay above OP. Then very, very, very interestingly, it will go for the KTR plus one, which you can see very clearly that it actually opens. And indeed, it went to KTR plus one rather easily. After failing to go down, the BMB appears 
and BNB with CCRY. So that's why the market went up to KTR plus one. And of course now it tried to go KTR plus two, but with the KSI rate, it's gonna be tough to, okay? Okay, so we have come to the, this uh, all end of the equity market. Let's look at the commodities market. Now gold yesterday was sideways all the way until 9 p.m. Then suddenly there was sudden up gush on the buying side. And we thought that, I mean, those who basically been waiting for the whole entire day, finally they profited. But after that, we hit 1795, right? I told you this is a very important number. It couldn't go any higher and it went all the way down. That's why when I tell you guys that the goal may go up to KTR plus one and therefore 1796. And that was where very importantly, you must take profit. If you don't take profit, then everything will be given back later. So in terms of news, again, there's nothing much on the news side. Basically all are saying that, right? Since there is no uh, chance of the rates going up too early. So that's why gold can be a buy. But of course the charts tell us another thing, okay? So yesterday is another doji ending day. It was a inverse pivot. Inverse pivot means that, right, the market will draw towards it. So that's why when the market opens, Opens between the two pivot point. I say that if it goes up, if we draw towards this point, 1786, which the goal really went there. Now, logically, if the goal stays above 1786, it will go higher, right? But unfortunately, the flip part is if it goes back down below the 1, 1, uh, 1786, the selling will be strong because the inverse pivot means the pivot power is even stronger. So let's take a look what happened over here. Can you take a look? So first of all, the market was sideways, sideways throughout the entire day. Then after that, it began to stay above OP and above pivot two in this case, and it shot up. And when it shot up, right, it really finally hit our KT, KTR plus two level. But once it hit there, I told you the KSI is red in color. It couldn't stay long. And once it goes below the pivot two, right, that means that the buying reason is no longer available. You can see the selling come down pretty fast, okay? So that is what happened for gold yesterday. A very tight day, not easy to trade. And if you have losses yesterday, it's kind of, kind of expected, okay? It's a tough market yesterday, all right? All right, so let's look at the gold for today and crude oil. Let's take a look right now. Now for gold today, let me just explain to you. Gold to have a doji, a very, very clear doji. So which means that I put the MLP, I have this number 1779, okay? 1779. Okay, 1779, okay? So which means that as long as gold cannot go past 1779, today most likely gold will be going down to 1761 level. Now, why do I say that? because that is a Fibonacci 1761. And of course, if I look at this chart right now, there is a chocolate bar right here, it's fresh, and um, the opening price is about 1764. So if you want to like, you know, go to be doing details, then maybe you can aim 1764, okay? That means that if gold stay below OP today, gold may be coming down to 1764. Right, so you can buy some at 1764 and some at 1761. Buy means you buy back your short. Now, in terms of long position, I say that I don't mind buying gold when it's about the Fibonacci level. So if later on, if gold do come down to 1761 again, right, I don't mind buying some gold to keep. All right. But of course, if you can go lower to 1711 or 1659, of course, it'd be even better. Okay, got an idea? All right. Huh? Now, of course, if the gold can stay above 1779, then this can go back again all the way and it's possible to go to this point here which is MA200 at 1816, okay? So to wrap it up, I mean, it's simple as that. I'm just saying, if gold can stay above 1779, gold may go back all the way to 1816. But if gold stay below MLP today, because normally after the doji day, the next is directional day, then gold may be coming down to 1764, if not 1761, okay? Pretty simple, right? Very all right, right? Clear? Okay, okay, all right. If you are very clear with this key, the word go G-O-L-D right now, all right, just to make sure that you guys have, have listened to me. And I kind of think that today, the, the possibility of gold coming down to 1761 or today or tomorrow, the probability is pretty, pretty high, okay? So guys, 
hope for you hopefully you get my hint today and do what you need to do okay Okay, thank you very much, guys. Thanks for you for your goal reply. Okay, let's go. Now, what the weekly chart, Rao, is losing steam. And of course, if you take the entire candle of the weekly chart, right, current price now, 1764, is kind of like slightly below the midpoint of the entire candle. So it's kind of telling me a bit of weakness here. So if today, or this week, sorry, if this week, if gold cannot stay above this point here at 1762, which is the 50% in the weekly chart, then seriously, this could be quite dangerous. It may come down to around here, to this point here, because you notice that right after this point, there is no more fresh chocolate bar on the weekly chart. So which means that right, if the market really loses this area here, about 1740 range around there, then it could be all the way down, all the way down to below 1700. So that's why I believe that this point here, 1762, uh, is a very, very important level for gold to stay supported for this week. It's very important, okay? So traders, watch out for this. This is a weekly chart, so we will see a long term and see about it again on Saturday, all right? Now, I think more than 100 of you guys have registered for this coming Saturday training session, all right? I'll be training you guys. There's a typo there. It's not going to be one hour. It's two hours training session. Okay, I'll, I'll remind you guys. Now, of course, I only I only accept people who are registered. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I mean, I really reminded and reminded. So, which means that only, only people who are registered, I will accept you in. It will be a Zoom session. Okay, it will be a Zoom session for you guys to, you know, listen to me. Of course, like I say those who register already do us a favor. If those people who didn't register, probably they're not interested. It's no point sending them the link, okay? Keep to yourself and then learn as much as you possible because if you are serious to become a gold trader, make money next six months, right? Then I think this is a good time for you to get yourself revised before the big movement comes in, okay? All right, don't, don't send the link out. Uh. Seriously, no, no point doing this. All right, if they were have been interested, they would come in a long time ago, okay? Now, silver yesterday was, wow, it was amazing. Look at it. Silver yesterday, it went up, right? And beautifully, it hits the MA200, which is $26.26, and come back down, wow. Look at it. Look at why I'm so into our MA. And the MA that I use is very different, right? So you can see that this is why, if you have such a thing, you will know why you cannot buy or why you shouldn't be chasing. So now we are seeing that there is a very strong support for silver at 2569 level and a very strong resistance at 26, 26 level, okay? These two numbers are very, very important. So all I can tell you is this, silver will consolidate around here, but if gold pulls back further, as what I said earlier, then we may see silver have to be going down to about the 24 region area, okay? Now, again, if silver do come down to 24 region area, I think that's a lovely time to buy some silver. According to Panatic and my own personal research, right? Yeah, $24 plus plus would be a lovely time to buy because the potential upside is 100%, it's a good risk reward ratio, okay? All right, so that is what I'm seeing for silver. Now for today, gold is also a very clear, again, invert, inverse pivot, okay? Now because it's an inverse pivot and the KSI is red, and if the market stay below OP, it's a very good chance to see 1761 traded. So my personal call is this, I believe that gold price today will be going down to 1761 region because usually when it's inverse pivot and the KSI is red and the market is below OP, very high chance we're going to see 1761 traded, okay? So traders, you probably won't take note of this, okay? But of course, follow rules. Huh? The rules say you can sell, just go with the flow and make money out of it, okay? Just with the flow, all right? Cool, we understand that? Yeah, okay. So, Kel, am I, are you selling gold today? Uh, yes, I'm telling you that. <laughs> okay, I'm selling gold. I believe that gold will go down lower later, uh, probably in about in the evening time, right around there, okay? Okay, so, yep, there's gold for you and look at crude oil, crude oil, crude oil. Now, crude oil is still mounting up, oh my goodness. Yesterday, crude oil went up to $74 already. See, almost every day is going up. So the thing is, some people ask me, Cal, 
when can we buy crude oil and I can keep. I'll tell you this, wait for a while. Really don't need to jump in right now. It's kind of high at the moment. If everything according to plan, I believe crude oil is going to come back down to around here, about 70 region, okay? If crude oil can come down to the 70 region, and if it can break below like this, wow, it'll be even better. But if it doesn't break and touch and go, then 70 region will be a lovely time to buy crude oil. So I based on the chart I'm looking at right now, right, it's very clear this company, this, this company is very bullish and um, crude oil is going to go up again. So any pullback down to $70 or $68, uh, it will be a very good time to buy crude because I believe it's going to go up again. Okay, after that. Okay. So I think you got my point. Okay, cool. Got it. Excellent. Okay. There's some profit taking now in Hong Kong. Yeah, some profit taking now in Hong Kong. Okay, let me just bring it to you live one more time, Hong Kong. Because Hong Kong, I already told you, Hong Kong today, the... the oh, no. Right, the KSI is red in color, right? I told you the KSI is red in color. So if Hong Kong couldn't go past, and you see that again, there's a color change. Don't you realize that, right? The thing is this about the TWB system. The color change will just happen really at the time that it's supposed to happen. And you look at it, the market couldn't go past KTR plus two. And you know that the KSI is red on a day chart, right? So initially when it went past KTR plus one, it went through it, it got holding back. So that's why it go higher to KTR plus two. But once it hit KTR plus two, you notice that it just couldn't go any higher. And the KCB at 28973 is there. And of course, straight away, the CCYR triggered the KTR plus two. So what you could have done is very, very simple. Short here, stop loss put here. So this is your X range. And now look at it, Hong Kong is down by almost two X already. So you see, you just have to follow the rules, follow what you learn and execute. And I told you before, when the KSI is red in color, right? Watch out for sell signal when it's going higher like KTR plus two or KTR plus three, right? Remember that? Okay, what link? Link for which one? Michael, what link is that? You're talking about the, the, the Saturday class? If you're asking for that, it's not out yet. Don't worry, yeah? we, will, we, will organ, we will find a way to give it to you subtly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. It's only for people who register. Uh, seriously, I really want people who take the active active role to do that, right? Because when you give people something that they don't want or they're not that interested, right? And if they even they come in, it's going to be very negative. I want positive vibes in this class. That's why I want you guys to really come in and participate. Yeah, that's a whole agenda of this, okay? All right, clear? Okay, huh? Okay, so that's Hang Seng. Uh... Yeah, okay, sorry. <laughs> a bit lost track on what I'm supposed to do. Okay, all right, so I'm done with all the uh, initial sharing right now. I will now take a quick 15 minutes break and we'll come back with the alternate market views. Now, today, the alternate market views is kind of short, about five, 10 minutes only. So if you're good to stay on, we just stay on, all right? Okay, thank you. Uh, Vincent, the registration has been closed. Actually, it's available on the Go, Go group chat. It's only on for Go. Are you a Go registered? Uh, I mean, are you actively involved in Go? Yeah, because if you are, you are, then I will have ready. I would have ready. Uh, you have already seen the posting. Check break for fifteen seconds. Okay, I'm coming back. All right. <laughs> Let me know, sorry. Okay, I mean that right. This is about five ten minutes for this segment segment only. Okay, so Vincent, um, are you are you a Go subscriber? If you are, you you have you have seen the polls that we do, All right? Yeah. Oh, you are okay. If you are a Go subscriber, then you should have seen the polling, right? Have you registered for the polling? Actually, the this the poll uh, but this is one one way that we register student. So it's not actually a poll, it's actually more for it's a link. So when you click on it and right, your, your IDs is there, then later on Susan will know what to do with you guys. Okay? Okay, right, right. So let's just continue then. Okay. Now this is the dollar index chart, and that's gonna be very instrumental to our dollar, our oh, sorry, our goal trading. So let's listen carefully, okay? Okay, so first of all, since last year, August, okay, the dollar index 
from about 96 region, went all the way down, and the trend line that connected it, it hits about 93.5, okay? Then if you do an extension downwards, incredibly, it also hit the recent high of 92.2, all right? So that means that this trend line that I just drawn seem to be pretty accurate. Okay, now we look backward, back look downwards. Okay, sorry. Now look at this is A. Now this is B, and this is C. Now what do you see here? Yes, if you look at it. This low here, I say X. All right, X low, Y low, and Z low. Okay, so there's three. There's a few alphabets here. So follow me. Now. When the market comes down like X, RSI goes down, it's kind of expected, right? That's A. So A and X, okay, is a pair. Now look at B and Y. Now B, the RSI also went below 30, and Y is a lower than X. So theoretically speaking, there is a very clear short that the market is a downtrend. And when the market came back down, and this time now, the RSI at C, didn't even hit below 30. That was the reason why I suspected that the dollar index may not be going up. And I call for buy in the dollar index. Remember, I told you guys that the dollar will likely be going up soon. Those who remember that, please key REM dollar. REM space dollar, D-O-L-L-A-R, okay? Because back in May, sorry, back in this uh, June, right, I was very, very clear. I told you that the dollar could be bottoming up soon. Now, many people ask me, is it because of the double bottom, but it could be going down lower? I say no, it's just that from the chart view, I know that the downside couldn't be limited. All right, so Z and C tell me different thing. You notice that, right, for Z is higher bottom compared to Y, even though C, all right, is near the RSI compared to B and A. So what is overall telling me is, from here itself, right, the market technically supposed to go lower, but it didn't. And when that happened, when the market break away from the recent downtrend, that was whereby you can see the algorithm, the boys, the news all come in at the same time, and that pushes up all the way to 92.2. Okay, got the idea now? So this is what I'm seeing right now on the chart. Now look carefully and hear me Remember this, huh? remember. Now watch this, I uh, clear the chart away. Huh? Watch, huh? this is the most important thing. Huh? Listen carefully. Now, look at this point right now, okay? Okay, I'm gonna re redo this again. This is A and this is B, okay? Now look up here and this is one and this is two, okay? I categorize that this way, okay? Now listen, A1 is a pair, B2 is a pair, okay? Now what will happen and mustn't happen? Okay, if the market later on goes up again and create another RSI above 70, that will be C. Now, this is going to be very important. If this happen, the market, when it happens right, the market cannot do this, cannot. That means that if the RSI goes up again to C, the high cannot be higher than number two, cannot be higher. Now, if the high is actually higher than number two, that means this entire thing have changed. That means that the dollar is going to rise. And that means also telling you that there's a very high chance that a tapering exercise have started and or internally they know already. And this is going to, this is going to change the whole, whole thing. And there's a high chance that interest rates will be going up soon. So this is going to be very important, guys. So please take a picture of this and remind yourself. The high cannot break number two when the RSI hit past 70, the next wave. Okay, this is very, very important technical analysis, which a lot of people don't really do that. Now, what if this happened? Again, this is A, this is B, this is one, and this is two, okay? Now, what if the next time the RSI goes up to C again, but it's like this, whereby number three, the high is lower 
than number two. Uh, if that really happens, then I can tell you this very high chance the dollar index will go down all the way to this point here at X. And when that happens, gold is going to shoot all the way up. Okay, if this number three that I'm sharing right now, if this is going to happen, then gold is going to shoot all the way up. Okay, so that's the reason why this coming Saturday is so important. And this dollar index is going to be so important for us to watch the market in the long, long haul. Okay, got an idea? All right, I'll re I will do this again on Saturday. All right, uh, at the very last part again. To, this is whereby we talk about long-term chart view of the US dollar versus the gold market. All right? All clear on this? If all are clear, key the word clear, okay? C-L-E-A-R, all right? If you like this thing, you like this sharing today, and you find it's a great sharing, then key the word great if you can, if you don't mind. C-R-E-A-T. G-R-E-A-T, all right? <laughs> if you think that this is a great sharing, and good because there are some people now calling that the dollar index will crash down. Um, like I say, it all depends on the what is fundamental news and whether are they going to even do tapering and stuff. So I'm not going to speculate. Okay, I'm not going to speculate the dollar will be up or dollar will be down. Okay, I already tell you that it will bottom and indeed it already happened. So I can only tell you one thing is that okay, on a very honest opinion, uh, if you look at it one more time, if you notice this. The dollar index this time round, right? When it rally uh, this time round, right? It's very fast. A couple of days for the same magnitude uh, to where it was, uh, the time that it took, right? Can you see that? The time that this time took is less than the previous time. So which means that now, right? The recovery, this area here, this whole entire recovery versus this point here, right? It's very sure this is considered with news. That means there's news element involved. There is news element involved. And because of that itself, right, okay, if the next wave is, is this news involved, right, that means that there is going to be another round. And that's the reason why I suspect, right, right, the dollar is going to go up. You understand my point? Yeah, so if the dollar is to go up, right, then, of course, gold price to come lower is possible. So if you're going to ask me and really, really tell me, right, I've, I've, if there's going to be anything that you're going to ask me, I will say that maybe in mid-July, the dollar will go up higher. And then after that, it's all right, go, go down lower. And that's where we can buy it cheaper. So again, 1711 to 1659 will be the better price that I'm much more comfortable to buy. But again, I say this again, if they do any form of tapering, all right, very good chance after a while later, right, they will just go back again to print because the market is nowhere near where it's supposed to be. So that's why uh, the economy, I mean, so that's why I, I tell you this, this dollar upside is going to be limited for a while. I mean, even if there's an upside, right, it may crash the gold down, the crash the gold price downwards. After a while later, right, they come back again again and do a printing again. I can tell you this. Because if you remember, Federal Reserve, Jerome Power, the next term is actually last next year, February. So if you are him, right, do you think you'll be stupid enough to do something like this to, you know, cause your credential to be bad? I don't think so. Lah. That's why I suspect that the dollar in the second half of the year, especially the last quarter, likely you'll go back down again. <laughs> you go up like, initially, but you come back down again because you're going to print, 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 print. You got my point? And when that happened, right, obviously the goal will go through the moon, all right? That's why I say go to the moon. So 2218 is still my target by March 2022, okay? Cool, huh? So this is the S&P implied correlationship, meaning telling you that, okay, whenever there's a, when people are basically very, very complacent, they don't think that anything will happen in the world, usually very incredibly something magically will happen. So the last time when you see something like this, okay, when the S&P implied uh, is, is uh, uh, here, you can see that suddenly the labor crisis happened, okay? Then after that, we have over here, uh, this one is the 2014, uh, there was a pullback in the market, right? Because of the taper crisis. Then of course, we have now today the same point back then, okay? All right, so that is where the COVID happened. <laughs> okay, so on the other side, on the other side around, okay, though you can see that always when this thing happened, right? So the number is about 40. Can you see that? About 40, right? Yeah. So if you look at it now, we are at 40. <laughs> we have 40, yes. Okay, we have 40 now. 
So what do you think? That's why I tell you this, there is a very small little part inside me telling me that right, a potential black swan event will be coming in probably August and September. Really, black swan. Or uh, what? I don't know. Maybe Jackson Hole? Maybe something else? I don't know. But that is it. So if you look at it in terms of price <coughs> prediction, it is very clear that if something will happen in August or September, then likely now the dollar will suddenly slowly creep up and causes the gold price, commodity price to go down. Yes. Then after that, all this will have a bit of repercussion problem. And then after that, something happened in August and September, the market then go into a tank mode, like the stock market may go to a tank mode. And then after that, <clears throat> that will fulfill what we say whenever hit 40, something incredible will just happen by itself. Okay. And then after that, <clears throat> Fair Reserve say, okay, okay, cannot do anymore. Right, then you free come in again, print, 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 print. And this time round, you say, I'm going to print for a longer time. And then, likely, Jerome Powell will stay on, sign a second term, obviously. And of course, the gold price will go through the moon. So, you got an idea now? For those who can see what I'm seeing here by visualization, you can see it. Can you key the word C? I can see it. Okay, or can see it again, C A N space S E E. Okay, so you see in terms of timing, in terms of the movement, it seems to be kind of planned in a way. And this is actually a very interesting chart when I pull, up, pull it out, right? I kind of like quite surprised that things happen for a quite interesting reason. It seems like, like we are involved in a chess game and when things happen, right, they will just press that button and boop, something will just out of nowhere will just happen. So with the variant ongoing right now and so many countries getting involved, if you look at the timing, we're probably going to see something quite drastic like, in August or September. So let's see. Huh? Okay, I'm not going to here to sell and imply anything, but I'm just thinking that in terms of timeline, this is going to be it. Okay, so by some in implicitly of this measuring of the market demands, in short itself, now we are at the very complacent level like, in short. Okay. <clears throat> All right, last one, a lot list, okay. Of course, of course, of course, this is not on a purpose, okay. But you can see that, right, this guy, Michael Burry, again, deleted his Twitter profile, All right, Colin? Hey, didn't see you covering this yesterday, <laughs> okay. He has deleted his Twitter profile again after he won of the massive bubble and epic market crash. Now, of course, people have been saying this, hey, come on, Akel. This Michael Burry may be right back in the Lehman Brothers' time, but this time round, he had been calling and calling and calling and nothing happened. Now, you must remember, remember one thing, now, back then, there was no Twitter. And back then, Michael Burry was six months to 12 months early before the market tanked. So if you go back into his history of his profile and all his Twitter, we are about six months to nine months now from the very first tweet. And he had been shorting the market also, and he was practically correct for the time when he was shorting the NASDAQ counters. Then after that, he went long and he made a lot of money on the NASDAQ. Remember that? So you can say that, right, you cannot compare what the last few months been calling and it didn't really happen. So all I can tell you is this, maybe because many people get very upset with him and he be calling and it didn't really manifest. People are like, hey, come on, man, you are, big, you are just a scammer and stuff like that. He get pretty upset. So apparently now he has just deleted the account again. <laughs> okay, he put it back and delete again. And this time now he already tell you right, is the he really think that this is gonna be the mother of all destructions, okay? And he felt that the Bitcoin is a bit overpriced and he think that this whole thing now is a misguided monster and he, he thinks that right, it is gonna really, really hit. So, and I checked his Twitter, he really have already, have, the tweet is no longer available. <laughs> okay, is it? Okay, is it? He come back again. Uh, I'll call in. Okay, thank you very much. Is it? I just checked this Twitter this morning. I just uh, collected it. I don't see the tweet. Maybe the tweet is deleted. Maybe the rest stay there again. All right, thank you, call in once again. Okay, uh, and of course, if you know what tweet did he do, this is the one, uh, right? People ask, always ask me what is going to happen on the market. It's simple. Greatest speculative bubble of all time in all things, all right? By two orders of magnitude, flying pigs 360. All right, so basically, all right. Okay, so again, I did not start this with Michael Burry in mind. All right, it was just because I was doing my calculation on how the dollar index will be moving versus my gold portfolio. And then after that, right, just happened to be, I just chanced and saw that he deleted 
his Twitter. Then I think it's thing back. I mean, one list to two, two list to four, and stuff like that. So all this thing adds together itself, right? Tells me that that it's a good chance that things may just happen in August and September. Okay. So if before August and September, if really things are gonna happen, then logically June should have some some selling. Then July, we should see some recovery. Then August is when the stage is set properly. And then maybe September, we're going to see the opposite. Okay. So I don't know. Let's see whether I'm right. And hopefully by then itself, we can all making good money and we can have a great Christmas together. And by the time hopefully COVID is no longer there, we can all party together. A hey, bet, right? All right. So today, last but not least, I'll show you my KFC. All right. Let me just bring it to you my KFC indicator right now. All right, to wrap it up for today. Okay, so this is my uh, Dow Jones, and you can see indeed now is correct. My KFC is now correct on the 23rd of June, and yesterday high is the going to be the KFC level. Okay. Okay, the high will be the KFC level. So yesterday high, uh, the high of the day uh, it is. Let's confirm this. The high of yesterday is 34,077. Okay, 34,000. 34,077. Okay, so which means that very simple, as long as the Dow can stay above 34,077, the Dow will most likely go to the all time high. Okay, sorry, yeah. Okay, simple as that. Now, now, today, as you can see, the Dow now is below 34,077, but it's above OP. So only if the market stays below OP today, then that means that the market will see some selling because 34,077 is the technical point based on the KFC. And of course, as you can see, there's two ways to get it. Some people say that hey, it's on the way coming down, so likely the market may bounce up. So there's one way to look at the KFC level. So that's why you have a 34,077 level. Okay, that's one way. The other way is that, right, you can see that the last few days, the market did go up towards the KFC level, right? So like then after that, the argument it may be coming down instead. So another way, look at it, because again, it's below the 34,077 level. Now, the only thing is that I want to inform you based on the PTP system, all right, you can see the KSI obviously is red in color, right? So selling is there. And when the selling is there and the market is moving upwards, uh, be careful of the yesterday low. If the market breaks the yesterday low, there will be selling because whenever a market is moving upwards, but the KSI happened to be red, right? Once the market loses the low, usually there will be some form of selling. Okay, so today, the yesterday day low will be very important and it happened to be it happened to be the cage also, okay? Then also the thing is that my own, another indicator that only PTP student have is called the KRW. The KRW indicator tells you that it's red in color. So which means that since this day over here, the market already gives you the indication that the market will sell. So it came with the KSI, it came with KRW. The KRW was two days in advance. So two days in advance already at this point here, we already know that the market will sell. And of course there was a BMB, all right? So that means that the next day, we already know that likely the Dow Jones going to crash down, and that's the reason why we call for sell back then. And of course, many of you make money. So this is the PTP technique called the KRW Cal Reversal Warning Indicator. This is only available for PTP students. Okay, it's only available for PTP students. Okay, all right. So with that, you can roughly know what to do. Now this is the uh, Dow Jones. Uh, since might as well, I give to you Hong Kong. Now Hong Kong is even worse. Okay, Hong Kong. You can see that the next date is on the 27th of June, but of course, you're going to cross a weekend, so there may be a change of date, like you know, by Monday. But you can see that the KRW already turned color from this point. That's the reason why Hang Seng, the last few days, I've been mean, calling for sell because this is like that. Now, with the KSI, that is straight in color and it's going up, right? So I think tomorrow, if the market breaks down here, there will be some selling on Hong Kong also at the same time. Okay, so all this is the reason why joining PTP has its reason, has its uh, rational reason. Of course, this is why, again, why sometimes I do have a little bit of insight in the market because all these will help me to analyze the market a little bit better. Okay, now, of course, sometimes it can be very wrong. <laughs> it can be wrong, right? It doesn't matter. End of the day, is that when you make a lot of money when you're right and you lose some money when you're wrong, overall, you should be positive. Okay, 
All right, guys. So this is the Hang Seng, and of course, the Nasdaq is very far away, so we'll talk about it. And the uh, Gold, right? Gold is also very far away. The the thing is pretty far away. Okay, uh, but Gold is very near to the one seven seven four one seven forty four level, lah. So if Gold breaks one seven forty four, this oh, uh, you know that is something to watch out for. Let's see if you can see that why Gold also been calling for sell because. The KSI and my KRW all of them call for sell. So when the price was going up here itself, right, I know that the gold won't stay up too long. So that's why I have a bit of argument recently with some people. They tell me that this is the yellow bar was a reversal hammer and it will go up and stuff. I totally disagree. I believe that the KSI and my KRW tells me that the market will sell. And truth be told, this is what happened to gold. Okay, so that is the reason why the P the TWB system has its merits, and you can see things from a very different angle. And as long as you have it, you can guys can make some pretty good money from it. Cool. All right. You think this is a very cool system? Please keep it C O O L or K O L. All right. This is where you guys are at the right place right now. And this morning M A O definitely have given you a lot of insights, and you can definitely make some good deal of money from it. Okay. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video today. I hope you enjoyed the session today, and I really wish you all the best. All right. Now, um, just F Y I today, no afternoon M A O. I repeat, today no afternoon M A O because I need to do some personal stuff. So today. All the best, and of course, look at Susan. She'll be there to assist you in your trading. All right. Till again tomorrow, Mio. I will see you guys. Goodbye. Thank you, Fred, for your coolness. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. Very impressed. See you guys. All the best in your trading. Cheers. Thank you, Colin. I will take a look at the at his uh, profile.